Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. My name is Aaron, and with me again here is Jamie. Hi, folks. And today we're going to be talking about painting. A lot of painting happened on this project, and so we're going to try and compress it all into one video. And this is one of the first videos where we really work together to uh, make a finished yeah, product. This is the first real like collaboration. You could see the handover, and just based on some of the clips, you can tell that it's been a while in progress. Yeah, so travel through time with us as we uh, go through this project. Yes, so let's start. So this is assuming you already have all the armor pieces sanded and smoothed out and that everything's ready for painting. Now here comes the fun part. Yeah, so here I am in the dead of winter trying to apply our base metallic aluminum coat. And a tank top, of course. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're not gonna wear sleeves outside. But I wanted this armor to look like it was made out of metal and then painted white. And so I think painting on this base coat with a rattle can of spray paint will give it a nice uniform color. I, you obviously don't want to be spray painting outside if it's lightly snowing. You can see that there are snowflakes collecting on the armor, but you want a good uniform base of this silver to kind of give the armor a good starting point. And what uh, spray paint did you use? Uh, this was Rust-Oleum Metallic Aluminum. I felt like it matched the chainmail that I was going to be wearing pretty well. Yeah, it's very bright. And for the next step, it'll really help uh, by coming out and being brighter over the next layer. And so mm -hmm. once the silver paint had dried, I wanted to start working on the white. Now, based on the references from Jake Bartok, it's kind of a rough texture. Like it's kind of a white metallic, but not really. It was hard to explain. This took a lot of trial and error, and I started over several times. Eventually, what I settled on was doing a bunch of dry brushing with this uh, just simple titanium white acrylic paint. And it came out really cool. You can see that it does look like a knight's medieval armor that was painted over, you know, that it looks like both a clone and a knight. It's, it worked out really well. And luckily for me, a lot of the uh, like paint textures on this set of armor looked very crude like nothing was very clean cut it definitely didn't use like paint or anything had no sharp lines everything was kind of a little bit hazy and scratched in and so what i'm doing here is taking a chip brush dipping in a little bit of the white paint trying to brush away most of it on like a paper plate or something and then painting on the excess and so it all automatically makes a little bit of weathering it makes it look a of an era as well, with a little bit of that futuristic sci-fi effect of Star Wars. And you want to try and be random with your movements. That way it really gives the impression that this is just kind of a suit of armor that's been worn, that's been damaged a lot, that's been out in the field. And it'll really help keep that silver underneath popping up. So now that you have that base down, it's looking like a basic clone. But how do you make a Captain Rex? Right, so we all know Captain Rex has a few defining features. That being, he's got some blue markings on his armor. He's also got the J guys on the forehead of his helmet. To do that, I'm gonna be using some Artist Loft Brilliant Blue. And very similarly to how I did the white, I am going to be brushing this on with a chip brush. That's, you know, very rough. The bristles on it are very thick. And just kind of dabbing it in the paint, brushing it on the surface, kind of layering it to get you know, a nice uh, darker blue texture or darker blue color, the more that I add on. It is important to note that there's white paint under this. And so that's really going to brighten up the blue paint that we're laying on top of it. I ran into this problem later when I was painting the pauldron blue that the base coat I used for it was black. And so the blue that I painted on it ended up looking a lot darker than the rest of the armor. And that's a good point. The base coat will always shine through because it's very rare that you'll have a paint that's completely opaque. They're usually translucent, especially colors like, like blue in this case. So you need to make sure that you're consistent with the base paint that you use for the colors later. Because mm -hmm. I believe you had to repaint it like with a white base coat and then the blue on top match pretty well. Yes, I did. And yes, it did. So once we have our blue paint on, we are ready to start weathering, which is a huge process. We could talk pretty much all day about it, but we're going to be using a few specific techniques, starting with what's called a black wash. It is remarkably simple, but uh, can take a lifetime to master, really. Take some black acrylic paint, mix it with a bit of water, and basically just wash it over 
your armor pieces, the helmet, and dab it off with a paper towel. Some of the paint will be left behind on the surface and kind of mix in with your base paint, giving it an impression of dirt and grime. It'll catch in some of those hard to reach corners and I think give the helmet a lot more life. Yeah, it really accentuates the difference between the silver and the white and the blue, and it will make everything pop together and individually. I think the black acrylic paint mixed very well with the acrylic white paint. It really darkened that up. Whereas if you're black washing a paint that you sprayed on with a rattle can, it kind of, it doesn't take the acrylic as well. You know, it kind of rubs off, you know, it leaves a little bit on there, but this white acrylic paint really darkened up when you put on this black wash. Yeah, it starts to pool a little bit and will discolor and really add a natural weather that starts to make everything look you know, realistic. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things to be careful of at this step. You definitely don't want to make your mixture too black, like use too much black paint right away or, you know, too runny. Yeah, or let it pool or streak in certain areas. Mm -hmm. So small amounts frequently build it up uh, until you reach a level that looks right to you. If you miss one of those streaks, you'll definitely see it later as it's just a long, like runny water streak of paint. It's happened to the best of us. Yeah, don't feel bad. So this is kind of where the handoff happens. There was a large time gap in between, but uh, you graced Galactic Armory with your presence and brought along a lot of expertise with it. So this is when I started to make this really in world. I wanted to give the effect that this armor was very much like Captain Rex. Armor panels were layered on top, almost heat welded against each other. So I started to use an airbrush and some Archive X blacks, browns, and earth tones. And I started to airbrush into these seams, really creating shadow and discoloring the what looks like metal and creating an effect of wear, tear, dirtiness that builds up over time mm -hmm. and changes how the armor looks overall. You can really envision that a lot of dirt and grime would collect in those overlapped metal sections where it'll be more difficult to clean out and you know dirt would be more likely to get stuck there. That's exactly right. It also gives you the impression, much like Rex's weld seams, that this is a medieval weld seam. Now, this is something that I had never tried before, but uh, I had some of these Sharpies laying around and you took great advantage of them. So this was a small cheat from my days of painting miniatures. When you have to paint entire armies with silver swords and axes, you break out the silver Sharpie. That is a great idea. So what I did was I took this Sharpie and just ran it along the edges. So really reinforcing that silver wear that would hit the highest points. And I start dabbing it into the highest points and making sure that there are little strokes and just little cuts off of that white paint so it's as bright as possible and really pops, makes this really look like metal armor. Right. So essentially what we're doing is making the recesses darker because that's where dirt and grime collects, but the high points brighter. Like that's exactly right. A good, up, good rubbed off silver, like this has been rubbing against metal and some of that brighter metal starts to show up underneath. So you're more of an airbrush man, but I do love my oil paints. And I asked you to touch up some parts with a little bit of this ivory black oil paint. Yeah, and whilst this is a method that I don't use that often, I find really good effects with it. It's really good for building up grime. It's really good for building up shadow, uh, for strikes against the armor, for deep recesses and where you can see that this armor has not been cleaned. This is armor that is very practical. It is not a knight that goes to shows. This yeah, is a knight that exactly. sees battle. I think the airbrushing does a great job at telling the history of this armor, as in like over the years, mm -hmm. whereas the oil paints kind of tell you where you've been in the last week. That's a great way to put it. And well, it wouldn't be Captain Rex without his mysterious tally marks that I have no idea what they stand for, and I feel like nobody really does. I mean, it would ruin some of the mysticism if we find out. That, that is true, but what do you? how are you putting them on here? So looking at Jake Bartok's um, original designs, I made sure to follow those as close as possible to show that they are hand-painted. They're really rough. They're various different sizes, different shapes. They're but kind of just all over the place, they, too. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. So I just hand-painted them just with a small miniature airbrush and just another uh, Archive X white and just built that up 
until it looked right. And that's it. I made it look as though it was scratched in or painted on directly. Mm -hmm. It looks like somebody scratched them in with a knife, basically, which is kind of how I think it would work. And then you're going to do the same thing, but with a different color for the helmet, right? That's right. The concept art showed that it was black on the side of the helmet. And so I just followed the same way. Now, this can either be up to your imagination. It could either be a paint. It could either be scratched in. And I made sure to mirror it on the other side. And I think the results came out really, really well. I definitely agree. I think the helmet looks amazing. You have to consider a lot of things about how this helmet would actually be worn. And so when doing the underside kind of the visor will lift up and kind of show this T visor underneath. How did you take that into consideration? Well, I made sure not to weather it anywhere near as heavily. Like we said, that this armor is well used and I highly doubt that the visor is going to be up in battle. So I made sure to not use anywhere near as much airbrushing, anywhere near as much oil paints and really focused on where dirt would naturally settle in a battle situation, which would be with the visor down. Okay, now we've got our lovely looking armor. What are we going to do to protect it? We need to make sure that all the hard work doesn't go to waste. So of course, we need to cover everything with a clear coat. How many coats do you generally do? I always like to do one heavier coat or two lighter coats, depending on the finish that I want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And we went with a matte here, right? That's right. We don't want this to be anywhere glossy. We wanted it to look realistic, just like metal. Right. We're kind of just trying to lock in that paint protected from anything like water. You know, it might rain while you're wearing this outside and any kind of other rubbing or uh, general wear and tear. And with the reduced visibility of these helmets, <laughs> it'll be a, a lot of scratches. You might be walking into some stuff. Well, let's put this whole thing on. It is very fun to wear, I'll say. And it's definitely a two-man job to get it on. Yes, that's usually the case for these clone troopers and even the medieval clones. So what I like to do is start with putting on the chain mail just so I have a so I don't have to put that on later. And then the lower body. Generally, you want to start with the lower body because it's going to be harder and harder to get to your lower body once you have your upper body on. This is advice for all armor yeah, wearing costumes. Yeah, that is very generic advice. And so I put the, uh, the calves, the knees, and finally the abs on before we start to put on the torso. And the shoulders just latch right in with the, what are those called? School Buckle. bag buckles. That's right. Those uh, latch right in and lay right over top of the chain mail. And in the last episode, I did the axes. So be sure and watch that if you're curious to see how we got those lovely looking axes finished. And yeah, you're definitely going to want some help to uh, adjust things as uh, things go forward. And make sure that you look as badass as you feel. Once you get the helmet on things, it just, you feel like a tank in this armor like you walking, look like one too walking through doorways is like you got to turn 90 degrees <laughs> shuffle through and then turn again it looks incredible together it's extremely imposing and i can't wait to bring this out to some renaissance fairs oh in the absolutely uh, speaking of future what's next for us on this project jamie well right now i am working on a lot of the leather work because it wouldn't be a medieval build if it wasn't covered with leather straps mm -hmm. boxes and pouches that clones are known for um with a medieval flair yeah and if you look at the references for these there are a lot of leather pouches leather straps everywhere uh this is going to be a complex build I'm a little bit jealous that you get to play with the leather all day, but it's also a lot to learn. Don't be too jealous. Those needles are pointy, and <laughs> I have met that many times. Uh -huh. Well, everybody, that catches us up to the medieval Captain Rex armor. We have it all painted, all pretty much ready to wear. All that's left is the comma, some of the leather works, a lot of the pouches, a lot of the little accessories that kind of go in. We have basically completed the 3D printed part of this build. But thank you all for watching so far. I hope you're enjoying the build series and I hope to see you again in the next video. 